they were most asked for my opinion, which I know they're not, I'd say we were taking the long way round. Gandalf, we could pass through the mines of Moria. My cousin Balin would give us a royal welcome. No, Gimli. I would not take the road through Moria unless I had no other choice. Ambition is the hallmark of a good DM and the undoing of many a promising campaign. But if you aspire to give your players an adventure in the great outdoors, you should highly consider Pathfinder 1E's Exploration System. Let's begin by getting into what is the Exploration System. Some settings are just too large to fit on a map. Towering mountain ranges, forests that stretch for days, and labyrinthine cave systems are not the kind of things you can fully map out. And even if you could, you would lose the impact of the thrill of discovery. Fortunately, Pathfinder's Ultimate Wilderness has an interesting solution, its exploration system. This system allows you to present your players with an adventure on a grander scale than ever before. To use the system, there are a few important concepts you need to understand. The first one is territory. Simply put, this is the area that your players will be exploring. It's a distinct geographic area with borders, but beyond that, it can be pretty much anything. From a desolate wasteland to a bustling city, or even an esoteric dreamscape. The next concept is locations. These are points of interest in the territory. A long forgotten cabin, a hidden tomb, a military encampment, all these things are what your players are exploring to find. And every one of these locations have what is called a discovery score. And that leads us into the most important thing about the exploration system, discovery points. This is a measure of how well your players understand the territory they're in. Players can acquire discovery points in a few different ways. The most basic and the most often used is exploring. This requires the player to spend an in-game day exploring the territory. This is represented by a skill check, typically a survival check, but some territories may require different skills. A large city might need knowledge local, for example. No matter the skill, the player can always substitute a perception check at a negative 5 penalty. The DC of an exploration check is determined by the CR of the territory. Some examples are a CR1 territory has an exploration DC of 17. A CR2 territory has an exploration DC of 19, CR3 21, etc. If a player succeeds at their exploration check, they get one exploration point plus one for every five they exceeded the DC of the check. However, failing the check by five or more will subtract one plus one for every five failed, reducing the party's total number of discovery points. This represents the players getting confused, needing to backtrack, and finding out contradictory information. The next way to get discovery points is uncovering way signs. Way signs can take many forms. They can be ancient documents, tavern rumors, weathered carvings. It's really up to you. Uncovering way signs and interpreting them has a variable DC and associated skill check determined by you, the DM. As an example, if a player is searching for ancient documents in a library that pertain to the territory they're going to explore, you might have them roll a knowledge history to locate the documents and a linguistics check to appropriately translate them. Way signs can also vary in complexity and how rewarding they are to solve. A simple way sign will give plus one discovery points. A moderately complex way sign will give plus three and a complex way sign will give plus five discovery points. However, misinterpreting a way sign can be detrimental. If the check is failed by five or more, the party's total discovery points is reduced by 1d4 discovery points. Players can attempt to interpret a way sign multiple times. However, once they've succeeded at their interpretation, succeeding at interpreting it again does not grant any additional discovery points. Once your players have successfully acquired their discovery points, what do they do with them? 
if the players know the existence of a specific location in the territory, they can spend discovery points equal to that location's discovery score to find the location. Alternatively, if the party wants to find a random location, they can decide how many discovery points they want to spend, then use the DM, will take that number and divide it in half. Take that number and compare it to the discovery score of the locations in the territory. If two or more locations have the same discovery score, then choose one at random. Finally, your player's discovery points are tied to the territory that they're in and can't be used if they go to a new territory. Also, discovery points gained in a territory don't expire if they leave. Now you know the mechanics behind the exploration system, let's talk about the actions your players can take while exploring. The most basic action is exploring. Because of the danger of losing points in this activity, the book recommends only characters with high survival skills, or high whatever skill you're using, should attempt this check. The book also recommends having another player use the aid another action to increase their chances of success. Also, consider allowing the use of certain items like a compass or other adventuring gear to help with the check, whatever check it be. The next action they can take is uncovering way signs. Remember, this can be done even before entering the territory. However, it also has the potential drawback of losing valuable discovery points. I would recommend the same mitigating factors of items and help for players attempting to uncover way signs. Once they have the points, they can seek a location. We've gone over that already. Finally, players can document the territory. A player can spend time mapping the area. The player can create a map with a profession cartographer check or a gazetteer with a linguistics check. The number of checks needed is equal to the territory's CR and the DC of those checks is equal to the territory's exploration DC. Once the item is created, a player can use it to get a plus 5 circumstantial bonus on further exploration checks. A map or gazetteer of an unexplored location is worth 100 gold times the territory CR. You can also award XP for exploration in the same way as combat. Now that you understand what your players can do in a territory, let's talk about creating your own. Step 1. Defining the territory. The most basic question, what is the territory? Is it a desert, an island, an alien planet? What are you going for? That will help you determine the relevant skill for exploring it. Survival is obviously the most common, but it varies from territory to territory. A cave system might use dungeoneering, or the bureaucratic circle of hell might need a linguistics check for paperwork. Next, you have to determine what is the CR. The penalty for failure and the relatively high checks needed to get discovery points forces players into different roles. Some players will explore, while others will search for way signs, and others will assist them. The next thing you'll need to do is design your locations. Your territory should have one or more locations to discover. Make them worth finding with rewards, like loot, in the form of treasure or raw materials, or whatever you think is appropriate, experience points, even way signs can be a reward for discovering a location. Anything that will motivate your players to explore. Every location has to have a discovery score. An obvious location, like a pyramid in the desert, a castle on a hill, or a seaside fortress, will have an initial discovery score of 3, while harder to find locations like a hut in the forest, a cave entrance in a ravine, or a ship run aground on a deserted archipelago will have an initial discovery score of 6. Additional modifiers can and will alter the location's discovery score. If it's unusually small, that might add a plus 2. If it's in mountainous terrain, plus 3. If it's deliberately hidden, that can add anywhere from plus 2 to plus 6. However, if it's a well-traveled location, that might give it a minus 4. If the location is unusually large or visible, that might give it a minus 2. Finally, remember that the minimum discovery score is 1. Next, creating way signs. Every territory should have 1 to 2 way signs and up to 10 for very large territories. This is one of the best ways to involve your players and give them information about the setting. Think about your players and their skills and what clues 
it would be best for them to find. Each sign needs a trigger or a way for them to find it. Talking to villagers, making a knowledge check, reading an old book, that kind of thing. It will also have a check to interpret the sign. So it's a two-step process. One step to find, one step to understand. The DC for interpreting way signs is a simple way sign will have a DC of 10 plus the territory CR. A moderately complicated sign will have a DC of 15 plus the territory CR. Finally, a complex sign will have a DC of 20 plus the territory CR. Finally, there's the random encounter table. The CR of your territory sets the average CR of the encounters. This is another great way to give the players information about the territory, and a way to fill them in on your story. As an example, if your party has heard rumors of a necromancer cult in a dark forest, having random encounters with undead will show them that they're on the right track. Your encounter table can be as short or as long as you like, but six is a good average number for the types of encounters your players can run into. A high percentage of combat means your players will fight more often. A low percentile for combat means that your players will fight less often, and this choice is really up to you. Think about how often you want them to be fighting and how dangerous you want the territory to feel. After you know the percentile chance of an encounter, roll as many times per day as you think is appropriate. A good average number is four times per day. Once at dawn, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and once at night. Finally, I would like to walk you through the Ultimate Wilderness's sample territory, the Knoll Canyon. This territory is arid hills, ruled by bickering knoll tribes, and stalked by desert beasts and ghouls. The territory is challenge rating 5. Its exploration check is a survival, DC 23. There are three locations to discover. The first is a hidden temple to Lamashtu, with a discovery score of 12. Next is a wyvern lair, with a discovery score of 8. Finally, there's the Red Sultana's Camp, with a discovery score of 1. It has one simple way sign, rumors about the White Canyon. A successful DC diplomacy check to gather information in a nearby settlement can reveal information about the region. It also has a moderately complicated way sign, worth three discovery points. This is recalling White Canyon lore. A successful DC 20 knowledge geography check reveals information about the region. A character who spends 30 minutes flying around the region and then succeeds at a DC 20 perception check can spot landmarks that give them the lay of the land. The next way sign is reconnaissance via flight. A character who spends at least 30 minutes flying around the region and succeeds at a DC 20 perception check can spot landmarks that give them the lay of the land. Finally, there is a complicated way sign worth five discovery points. This is deciphering a journal. If the party finds an ill-fated explorer's journal in the wyvern's lair, a player who can read Aklo and succeeds at a DC 25 linguistics check can correctly interpret the explorer's notes. This territory has random encounters rolled four times per day, once in the morning, once at noon, once at dusk, and once at midnight. There is a 20% encounter rate. If the players get a random encounter, they might have to fight a giant vulture, a mummy, a knoll wild pack, two dire hyenas, a knoll hunting party, one wyvern, or two ghouls with CRs varying between 4 and 7. I hope you've enjoyed the DM's Guide to Exploration in Pathfinder. Now, if you would like to see a video going over more sample territories, let me know down in the comments. Also, I've left a link to the PFSRD page about the Pathfinder exploration system down in the description. Finally, if you're interested in taking your game further, consider joining the D6 Damage Discord. We have all kinds of fantastic discussions about world building, game mastering, character builds, and much, much more. Thank you for watching.